together. It is a day that could not come soon enough. It is a time for all of us to honor these two great people we all love dearly. Their love is strong and youthful. It took years for them to find one another, but now that they have, their love will never be broken. The moment they first met seemed too good to be true. There was an instant connection, instant spark. We all knew it was meant to be. The similarities between the two were shocking. Their love for a good time, family, and science fiction made them the perfect match. Today is the day the chapter of engagement ends, and a new chapter filled with love, new family, and a new best friend begins. We begin a journey today, hand in hand, with the support of their families behind them. Now all that is left to do and say is thank you to God for bringing these two together to say, I do. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth, may the thoughts and meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Three weeks after her wedding day, Joanna called her minister in hysterics. Pastor, she cried, John and I had our first fight. It was horrible. What am I going to do? Calm down, Joanna, her pastor answered, smiling, shaking his head on the other end of the phone, leaning back in his chair. This isn't nearly as bad as you think. Every marriage has to have its first fight. It's, it's normal. Yes, yes, I know, I know, Joanna said impatiently. But what am I going to do with the body? <laughs> now today, we are gathering to watch something courageous and beautiful. Two people coming together to give themselves to one another in marriage and begin this new thing. Marriage is a beautiful thing, but like all relationships, it's hard because there are other people involved. Everyone knows that if we want marriage, if we want family to work the way God intends, we've got to have love. That's got to be foundational. Love is the key to marriage. But not exactly the kind of love that we often listen to songs about or see in the romantic movies, a continuous and never-ending feeling of being in love, of being on that high moment where time just seems to stand still. We don't live our whole lives in those frozen moments. Eventually, we all come down from that high, and we come down to the reality of dirty laundry on the floor, of dirty dishes in the sink, of wondering whose job it was to go get the groceries, and looking through bills and medical bills and tax papers together, and Sometimes it's the reality of cleaning up after a sick spouse and, and living day in and day out with somebody who has very real faults, just like they have very real uh, graces. It's down in the day-to-day -day of real life, lived with a spouse with real flaws, that we can actually learn something about what the Bible means when it talks about love in the fullest sense. Of course, the Bible has a lot to say on the subject of love. For instance, in 1 John chapter 4, a profound summary of the good news, the gospel, and give a, a deep insight into the heart of God, we hear these words. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also Ought to love one another. If we want to know what it means for God to love us, we need to look at the cross of Jesus. God's love is not simply a warm fuzzy he feels when he looks down upon us, but it's a concrete action that he has taken, giving his son for the life of the world, to live among us, to suffer on the cross, to die, and to rise again, to offer new life to those who trust him. God did this as a great act of love. That's what love means in the Bible. That's where we look to see it. When John talks about this kind of love we see in God, he says, Dear friends, since God so loved us in this concrete action, we also ought to love one another. That's the kind of love that can sustain a marriage. It's the kind of love that doesn't just seek what's, what I want, what we want, what's comfortable for us, but looks out for what's best for the other, what's good for the other. The passage of scripture that Monique and Andrew picked for us today is Ruth chapter 1, 16 through 18. And you may not be familiar with the book of Ruth. It's a short little story in the Old Testament. It's a story really of a woman named Naomi. And she has a wonderful family, a loving husband and two great sons. And they're both married and to wonderful women. And she's got this great family life. And she's one of the Israelites, one of God's people. She's from Bethlehem. 
But then tragedy begins to strike their family. Her husband dies and both of her sons die. And she's left with her two daughters-in-law in a foreign land where they've been living together. Now Ruth turns, uh, Naomi turns to her two daughters-in-law and she says, Look, I don't have any more children for you to marry, so why don't you all go back to your families, go back to your homeland, go back to the people who can care for you. And after much weeping and crying and hugging, o o Orpah, one of the two daughters-in-law, relents and goes back to her people. But Ruth, the other daughter-in-law, clings to Naomi and she says, Naomi says, look, you need to go back, just like your sister-in-law has done. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn from following with you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people will be my people, your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. And then the scripture says, when Naomi saw that Ruth was determined to go with her, she said nothing more to her. So the two of them went on together till they came to Bethlehem. Now, Ruth might have good reason to go back to her family, but she says to Naomi, I'm not leaving. I know our family is little and tiny, and we've had all these difficulties, and we're so beleaguered, and, but I'm staying. I'm sticking it out. That's what family means to me. I'm committed to this family. If you go home and read the whole story, you'll find that uh, Ruth, because she stays with Naomi, actually marries another kinsman of theirs and goes on to be the great-grandmother of one of the Bible's great heroes. It all kind of works out the way it needs to. But commitment, that is what Ruth is known for. That's what these words are all about. I will be by your side. I will stick it out with you through the ups, through the downs, come what may. In the example of Ruth, we see again what the Bible means when it talks about love. It's that commitment to be together, to stay day in, day out. And whenever we do that, whenever that happens in relationship we can look at those relationships and see a little glimpse of the kind of love that God has given us and his son, the God who's committed to sticking it out for us. Marriage is, after all, God's idea. He created it as a union between a man and a woman when he joined them together for the first time. And it's a wonderful gift that God has given us. And ultimately, like all of God's gifts, marriage is intended for our good and for our growth. Despite the message we might get from some movies and songs, marriage does not exist first and foremost to make us feel happy all the time or ultimately fulfilled. Lots of people get into marriages expecting that and then they become disappointed or even give up when it doesn't work out that way. But God has given us marriage as a gift to help us learn how to give and how to receive the kind of love that we see in Jesus Christ. God has given us marriage to help us become grown up spiritually. That's what it's for. Marriage gives us an opportunity to learn and to practice every day that self-giving, that cross-shaped love that we see in Jesus. And that's the great challenge and the great adventure of marriage, turning, learning how to love, learning how to commit like he's shown us. And growth, when we grow up, that can be a painful process. And growth in love sometimes isn't comfortable, but it is ultimately the way to joy. I've been thinking a lot about marriage and, and the challenges that come with it, and I think it's not unfair to say that it really is a kind of a cross that God calls some of us to bear. And as we carry these commitments, as we live into them, we can become transformed into the image of Jesus. And as we follow him, we find that walking the way of the cross is actually the way of joy and the way of life. May God grant both of you the strength to bear these commitments that you make today, that you can grow in that self-giving, cross-shaped love, that commitment, as we see in Ruth, as we see in Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator and preserver of all life, author of salvation, giver of all grace, bless and sanctify with your Holy Spirit, Monique and Andrew, who come now to join in marriage, grant that they may give their vows to each other in the strength of your steadfast love. Enable them to grow in love and peace with you and with one another all their days, that they may reach out in concern and service to those around them. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord.